In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good evening, or good morning, whenever you're watching this. I just thought to make a quick video. I was thinking about a moment the other day. I was riding home with my dad, and it was quiet in the car. We were talking, but he noticed that quiet, and he said, You don't listen to music. You don't have a TV. I don't know how you're not crazy yet. So I just wanted to make a video talking about why I am like this, why I prioritize silence. I don't have a TV, as you notice on this side of me, no TV. The icon of St. Paul took my TV's place, and then you have a sword on the other side. So you notice the title, How I Traded My TV for This Sword. This side, I get confused. But from a high schooler, from a middle schooler, from someone who always grew up watching TV, in college I was playing video games uh, during the lockdown, the pandemic, it was the first year at university, so I spent really that first half a year just in my dorm room playing video games or watching TV, watching a television series, listening to music, countless hours of music. I listen to probably more music than most people you know. But you take me now and like people ask me, what's my favorite song? And I really don't have a favorite song. I listen to music, but it's never like on a consistent basis where I have, say, an archive of music, like an iTunes account or anything. My iTunes is just filled with classical music. And so it's very hard to answer that question or like, what's my favorite band? I don't have a favorite band. Or what's my favorite movie? I haven't watched a movie in two years almost. So... I'm very familiar with entertainment, though, just in general. I was very much involved in it, very much eating it up like any young person today is. They're locked in the house, they're locked in their room, and they're consuming something. It's very much a consumerist culture. And that's really the switch that happened sometime last century, not to get too philosophical, but there was a switch where entertainment went from something that you do with the family, you participate in. The family has a band, they all sing music, they all play instruments, or you, you're an artist, you paint a picture. But entertainment became something that you consume, something that happens to you, something where you become mindless, where you sit in front of a TV and you don't think, you don't talk to anyone. It's a taboo to talk to people while you're watching a movie because you're supposed to be zoning out. You're supposed to let all of this information completely influence you in any way that's left up to the creator of that program. And so there are a couple of problems with that. I, I don't even really have to talk about those much. You can just imagine what you're exposing yourself to can affect you. You are what you watch. You are what you listen to. It affects everything from your sleep to the way you think, the way you're able to talk with someone as long as you don't have an earworm playing in your head. So it is really disruptive to a consistent and logical basis of life where you take things as they are and you make judgments on them with reason, with rationality. And so... When you're just sitting there and you're letting things come to you, you're letting everything be done to you, even video games, you're participating, but you're participating on a program that's already locked in place and you can't really play the game without outside of that program. And so that's really the philosophical basis to all of this, but really just my direction in life where I was getting away from all of this entertainment came from really overconsumption. I was completely infatuated just with consuming media. I had to read some of the best books ever. I had to watch all of the best movies ever. I had to listen to the best albums, the best bands. And so it was almost this competition with myself and this competition with the world, what the world considers the best media that people have to experience. And so that's really what they're providing to you, experiences. You can watch this television show, it's an experience. You'll be able to talk about it with other people after the fact. Not during, of course, but this experience that you can, that can shape your view of society, 
And so people, they have this really conformist route of thinking with that. They want to be like everyone else. And so when you don't have a TV, you have all of these books, books that you've probably never heard of, books that I'm unfamiliar with, books I've never read, probably will never read, but they do shape me to be a unique person. And so I don't have a TV, but I can say that I'm a unique person. I don't have a TV, but I have this sword in the background. And you may have never noticed this sword, but every time you watch one of my videos, you'll probably notice it from now on. It's actually... A sword, to be uh, contradictory, it's a sword from the Lord of the Rings movies, Gandalf's sword. And so, to answer the question, how did I get this sword? It came from my brother. We made a trade, my TV, for the sword, which he had possession of. And so, it was a very easy deal for me to make. I was going to get rid of the TV anyway, and I was like, well... Do you want that sword? And so, best deal I've ever made. And I have so much peace and quiet now. I really feel bad that I gave my brother that that noisy, that reckless and reprehensible TV. Now he has to live with that. But you can have media. You can have media in moderation. You can listen to music in moderation. You can watch movies or documentaries in moderation and so that was something that i was able to develop once i broke free of having this archive of music on my phone that i always plugged in to my card and it automatically started playing or this archive of dvds sitting underneath my tv that i'll just one after the other put them in the dvd player and so when you break free from that you're able just to live this life where well, this is what I want to do right now. This is what I want to do tomorrow. You don't have to be locked in to this, this cycle of, oh, I have to finish this TV show. I have to read all of these books to keep up with my coworkers. No, you could actually live a unique life on your basis, on your watch. And so I really recommend just to all young people watching this to consider getting rid of your TV, trading it for a sword if you're able, and really to all people in general, just to live a life that goes against the culture, goes against the grain. And really as Catholics, as Christians, I have to tie in some spirituality to this video, to live a life where you're not constantly going along and being influenced by all of the whims and all of the agendas of the world where you can actually be your own unique person and discover God in that silence. My patron saint, St. Alphonsus, once said that God speaks in silence. So if you want to hear God, you have to have silence. And just one quick last note, this video is already getting longer than it needs to be, but silence and boredom those are things that are very uncomfortable to people today and there's a reason for that silence is really the great amplifier it amplifies whatever is in the human heart so if people are having trouble with anything with themselves they're uncomfortable with who they are that silence is going to make that worse and it's really going to be uncomfortable for them and so if you want to discover who you are, discover who God is, who God made you to be and who God wants you to be, who God sees you as, you have to have silence. You have to be able to live with silence, with boredom, with not doing anything, with getting rid of your TV and being seen as someone who might be idiosyncratic but as someone who in turn is unique and authentic. And that is really the trade you're making. And always, if you can make that trade, get a sword. So thank you for watching and may God bless you.